What does METCO stand for? A. Metropolitan Council for Educational Opportunity. B. Metropolitan Education Transportation for Childhood Opportunity. C. Metropolitan Childhood Opportunities. Or D. Making Education Tangible for Children Organization. The answer is A. The Metropolitan Council for Educational Opportunity. The Boston busing crisis of the 1970s left a lasting scar on the city's history. The scenes of racial unrest disturbing even today. But in 1966, METCO's busing program launched with great success, says the president of METCO's board of directors, Charles Walker Jr. What was different? School busing in the 70s, there was a mandatory component, and METCO was the program of the people that wanted to do it. Professor Susan Eaton of the Heller School for Social Policy at Brandeis wrote a book on METCO entitled The Other Boston Busing Story. It was really a story that was obscured by the busing crisis, which was the big explosive story full of the drama and the action. And then meanwhile, we had an example of a pretty successful voluntary effort that could have been bigger. METCO began in response to a group of parents boycotting the Boston schools. It was created because there were racial disparities in the quality of the education kids were getting in Boston to such an extent that uh, you had sixth graders reading at second grade and third grade levels. The facilities were inferior. It was created not just to eliminate racial isolation and racial imbalancing, but to really just provide equity in education for all the suburban and urban kids. Back in 1966, seven suburban school districts, including Newton, Wellesley, and Braintree, opened up their doors to Boston students. The state funds the METCO program on an annual basis. It's paid off for over 50 years. I mean, these students, they perform. Over 98% of the graduate from their schools and well over 90% are placed in colleges. Now there are 3,300 students and 37 school districts participating, making it the largest voluntary desegregation program in the country. Some might argue the most successful as well. It really was born in the civil rights movement as a collaboration between activists, African-American moms for the most part, and suburban elected leaders of school boards. And that, I think, made it very special in that sense, and it has lasted. Eaton, who co-authored the Pioneer Research Study on METCO, found that METCO students fare better than their Boston peers, but still face many challenges. They often felt like they were being stereotyped, there were lower expectations for them on the part of students and of faculty. Professor Lisa Gonzalez chairs the Department of Curriculum and Instruction at UMass Boston School of Education. She agrees that METCO is a great program for the kids who are in it, but maybe not for city schools. My biggest issue at METCO today is that it takes middle class parents who are educated, who know how to work the system, who could really work for the schools, it takes a lot of those parents out of the system. So they don't advocate for the schools in the city. And I think that's a huge loss for Boston. Gonzalez believes those same students would fare just as well in Boston public schools. Is it just MECO or is it the kind of families and parents that the kids have? The parents are educated, have college degrees. I'm sure their parents, they have the kind of experiences that help kids do well in school. So it's a hard puzzle. From her research with African-American males, Gonzalves found anecdotal evidence that cultural differences were seen as learning differences. The child will be labeled quite young in the METCO system as having some kind of learning disability or being put on an IEP. Eaton says her research found it's a myth that METCO is full of middle-class students and there is no empirical evidence that more METCO boys are being placed on IEPs. We see African-American boys in particular disciplined at higher rates and put in special ed at higher rates when they probably shouldn't be there in all kinds of school systems all across the country, and that includes urban school systems that are predominantly African-American. So that is a big problem everywhere, and um, it's because of racial discrimination. And the reason METCO was created half a century ago. METCO is trying to be a corrective to that discrimination that created a situation that is quite unnatural where we live apart from one another. It's not gonna solve the whole problem, but it is, in fact, 
about all we have to do that. Roughly 3,000 students participate in METCO each year and tens of thousands have participated during the life of the program. METCO is currently accepting applications for the 2023-24 school year.